In the time of his youth, the man who would grow into one called Lermet felt the force throughout all that lived. Yet when he spoke of this to his mother, she hushed him and moved him away from others that might listen. He listened but bade him to not to tell others of this, for they would think of him as deranged and not right in the head. Told him that they would take him away from her on a diagnosis of mental weakness and lack of passion. For years this was drilled into his skull as truth, often to the point of aggressive beatings. On his eighteenth birthday however, Lermat, received a force apparition telling him who his real father was, and that he was an overseer at the academy. Far from disbelieving this as a figment of his imagination, Lermat began to suspect its truth. His mother had been hiding something. He had hid from his father a marital infidelity that would been seen by her husband as a brand of weakness. If he were to detect this, it would not have only relegated her to a dirty servant but the child himself to slavery. Since Lermat was her only living offspring, and she believed he could learn strength and passion, she hid her indiscretion. And indeed he did. The boy grew in the force to the point that he could hide his abilities from other force users within his lineage, or channel them into physical prowess. Oftentimes instinctually, he protected himself from a well-placed blow during combat practice. However, much of the time, his agility was curtailed by these protections. Therefore through practice he began to devise a way to both defend and attack using the force rather than learn strictly combat evasions. Then in the family this pleased his trainers, not knowing he was more of an inquisitor than combative, his fellows in training grew to hate him. Some learned to capitalize upon his lack of agility, and made him vulnerable to criticism at key points in his training. His actions caused some of his trainers to begin to question his capabilities and worthiness. His constant attacks on his character, and the social effects on his rank among his noble house made him sink deeper into lore and scholarly research keeping his psychological wounds to himself, nursing his insecurities, fears, and anger about his life, until one day he was able to develop a new telekinetic skill rarely found in his noble house. His ability greatly improved, not his ability to hide his more esoteric abilities, but his defense and athletic mastery in weaponry. This fear and dread began to arise again among his fellow trainees within his house, so he remained silent, daring not to tell anyone. Though his passions were now kindled, and what was once a spark was now a flame, so he studied harder, trained longer, endured more both in training and private, no longer feeling stifled or paralyzed by his fear and other negative emotions. Lermet began to meditate, and learned there was more to the force than others were teaching him. Each tome and lore artifact he found in the regal archives, he felt more protected even though it seemed his combat expertise seemed to wane. Instead he was drawing strength not from his body but from his mind. He became more resolute in his academic studies, both public and private. His knowledge led him, still, down a darker path than he expected as he discovered the strength that could be drawn from pain and death, weaken one's adversaries, and make yourself more vicious in attack. Met found that death and entropy were balancing points to life and transformed his entire view on the dark side and light side of the force. It was almost magical and even primitive. The more study, he found that many of his peers were blinded by the use of the dark side by letting their passions control them and eventually subsume them. Eventually this dedication to only their strongest passion caused the force itself to feed upon their soul and body, giving them a servant to baser powers and trained by emotional needs that lacked intellect, all the while giving the sense of power and superiority as an apex predator on the hierarchy of the food chain. This illusion made it appear to so many of them that their expertise, senses, and intelligence were so much more than it actually was in function. As their soul was devoured by the purest of dark side energy their passion's intensity grew as well. It changed them, warped them into something more bestial. He hoped, as he got older, the same would not happen to him, but for him a missing part of his past seemed to hold the answers. That portion of himself that could only been seen in another, his father. But when the noble houses began sending their people to Corbin to train at the academy, Lermet knew he must go as well. He must pass the academy trials as a warrior though, and not a scholar. He added his own illusory guise to himself, and hid well his abilities upon arrival at the academy. Where the first person he met was Tremel his biological father, that his mother hid from him. Here ends my report on the young Sith.
follower of the light side of the force. With this report, I will send the first of his holocron recordings. Further reports are forthcoming, along with any other holocron recordings I might find. Jaffeth Moore signing out. Medical attention. Be well.
Excuse me, acolyte. Sergeant Corman, 5th Infantry Company, Corriban Regiment. Can I... can I talk to you? Speak freely, Sergeant. Thank you. You're the acolyte Overseer Tremel had brought in special, right? Heading down in the tomb to show what you're made of. And to find myself a Sith Warblade, apparently. Well... Here's your chance to not only show off for the overseers, but start building ties to the Imperial military as well. I'm here commanding a hard target mission to exterminate claw slugs in this tomb. They're horrific things. Mouths bigger than your head. I've lost three squads of good men fighting them. They come in packs. They just... they'll swallow a man whole. If you're trying to talk me out of this, it won't work. Understood. I was hoping you could assist my operation while you're in there. The damn claw slugs breed so fast there's no way to wipe them out conventionally. So we started targeting their egg chambers. They went insane. We managed to get explosives to all of the egg chambers, but the claw slugs were all over us before we could detonate them. Perhaps I could be of assistance. Don't underestimate those claw slugs, sir. They're, they're smarter than they look. <laughs> 